and position 9 and position 10 comrades and the pistons in the distance moving. And there we go, there's the new oil squirter in the distance. Here we've got an E60 M5 which has come in to reach motorsport for the preventative work for the Comrade bearing shell replacement and also bolts. So just to start the process when the cars come in, we're going to start getting the under trays off so we can take the front subframe off. The customer's chosen BE bearings, which are here from America, and we're going to be going with the um, bolts as well. So uh, we'll get started and strip this car down. We've started taking the front suspension apart and we've disconnected the steering system via the steering rack, so um, not to disturb the wheel alignment on the threaded connections. Got the front arms off and everything's laid nicely against uh, microfiber cloths, so not to touch any alloy wheels. Um, front arms are disconnected, the steering, uh, sorry, the um, Xenon level sensor system, the Vanos uh, pressure accumulator has just been disconnected, so the power steering hoses and various other, like the oil pumps on the side of the sump. And now we're just going to be getting ready to um, put the load level system on the engine to support that whilst we disconnect the front subframe next. So here's all the parts laid out for the E60 M5 that we're doing Comrod bearings on as a preventative measure. The only thing we haven't got in this video is the Castrol engine oil, which is 1060. So just start with, I've basically grouped them into areas. So this is the sort of items, the basic items that you need to do the Comrod bearing shells. It'd be obviously engine oil, a genuine BMW filter kit, sump gasket, oil pickup pipe O-ring, and then your bearings of choice. And this, to, this, this is uh, BE bearings. The American brand BE bearings plus the BMW Comrod bolts and then from there you've then got other options and this customer is going quite detailed having nearly all the things done that you could do um, nearly so it's having the um, Vanos high pressure pipe the internal pipe plus the banjo bolt and the top o-ring um, and then also we've got spare chain tensioner items so it's the spring the sleeve and the little disc which the uh, chain the spring sits in then we've got some upgraded um, chain tensioner items this is the oil pump chain the main oil pump chain which is secondary driven by a chain and these are the tensioners and the bushes which is the upgraded version then we've got oil spray nozzles there's an upgraded version of these now there should be five of them but two are on back order in germany so there's three pictured here and two more to arrive this is the new style piston squirters and then also an option to change for relatively small money the oil filter housing because on the v10 it sits upside down so whenever you get any sort of bearing material or debris it always collects in the bottom on the v10 so for about another 35 pounds it's always good to change that to save any particles being stuck anywhere in that system then this customer is also specifying a dual drained sump so it's the front sump bolt is in addition because it's currently only got the single one so we'll need a couple of items for that we need both oil drain plugs the oil level sensor o-ring copper washers for those um, and also the side o-rings for the oil pumps on the side of the sump and then lastly this is a little bit more expensive this version but if you're fairly stripped on the bottom of the engine it's not much more to upgrade the sprocket wheel for the Vanos high pressure pump and it's because it's got longer teeth and also in turn you have to then change the end of the crankshaft driven gear as well because they mesh together they're different shaped teeth they're longer they've got better engagement um, so with that there's a few items you need a center bolt for the sprocket um, you need the vibration damper stretch bolts which you have to take off to release the timing case um, behind the timing case which is how you release this gear wheel got some new bolts for the belt driven section that bolts through the vibration damper and then we've got a front crankshaft oil seal which you need to replace as well we've got all the BMW special tools here to do all this um, specifically setting the backlash between the Vanos high pressure pump gear wheel and the crankshaft gear wheel that's quite specific um, there's a few other tools for removing the front crank seal nicely without damaging it and also installing a new one we'll try and get those videoed in this process but that's all the parts there majority of them are genuine bmw apart from the comrade bearings which are be 
So the subframe's now off and we've also got the sump off, the engine supported on our special tools. And we get the first look inside the bottom of the engine. So this is the Vanos high pressure pump, directly driven by um, gear wheel, straight off the front of the crankshaft gear wheel. And then it's chain driven across to the main engine oil pump. And these are the two pickup pipes. We've well, got a pickup pipe and a return pipe. And now you can see up into the engine block, you can see the pistons in the distance, and the connecting rods here. And these are the comrod bolts and the bearings are inside wrapped around well they're actually sat in the comrod and comrod cap that are actually designed to sit around the crankshaft journal and they float on a film of oil this is a nice view of the comrod just here and looking up to see the piston and also see the oil piston squirters up in the distance which we're going to be changing for the new design on this job as well so here we are on position number six, and we're just using the plastic gauge system as we do on all the old bearing shells, and we'll be doing this on the new one as well. And we've got a plastic gauge squash on the journal, and, um, and we're seeing a clearance of between 0 0.038 to 0 0.050, which is consistent with position one to position six so far as we've been working down the engine. So that's what they look like with the crankshaft, uh, sorry, comrod cap removed. You can just see the comrod in the distance behind there. And there's one of the comrods. This is position five that we've done already. And there's the journal in view and the pink is the plastic gauge. And this is basically just a sanity check to make sure that the new bearings and the old bearings are okay and within a clearance tolerance. So there's nothing too tight or too loose before it all goes back together. You'd naturally assume that they'd all be fine because the car was running and obviously the bearings are brand new but it's always nice to double check. You don't want to uh, risk just guessing or putting them in fast because you just we just never know. You never know. We've seen them before where we put them in and a plastic gauge check has shown 0 0.076, which is outside of BMW's tolerance. And if you'd have run that, there's also risk that there was too much clearance there and you never know what happened. So that's why we always do our plastic gauge checking on the old shells clearance and the new shell clearance. And then we record the data just to make sure we've got some quality control check-in and we check the old clearances versus the new clearances on the shells. So the old bearings were the BMW ones, which we need to mark down what part number they were, but being a 55 plate, I'd imagine they were the original style. And we're going for the BE bearings um, and we've got a nice consistent new shell clearance of between 0 0.038 to 0 0.050 all the way across so far. That would say we're on position six now which was cylinder three technically. Um, I'm also just doing the three stage torque check, six 20 newton meters and 130 degrees and recording our finished data on that as well. So here's our old ones laid out and these are in position numbers, not cylinder numbers. And we can put the, obviously these are the old bolts and old shells, so we can put them on uh, what we, it's not a dirty table, but it's not the clean table. But obviously a clean assembly is for the new items. So the upper parts of the shell are normally the worst stage because that's the one that sees um, the downward stroke. And this is position number two. And we've got copper showing on this one. And also position number five, we've got copper showing on the upper part of the upper half of the shell as well. So we did order a few new things for this car because we were doing the Vanos high pressure pipe and where we take the Vanos pump off to get those pipes in nicely. We expected, being a, uh, a 55 plate car, to find the older style gear wheel and the older style oil pump chain tensioner and the bush. However, they've already been done. This is the new style um, system, the teeth, which I think came into effect in December 2005 from memory. And the upper one, chain tensioner, is different along with the bush or the, um, yeah, the sleeve. Uh, compared to the lower one, this one's definitely been done because it's a different colour to the other one, which is already on the oil pump. And the sleeve and the spring are different part numbers for the newer system, and they've been done. So it's quite possible that it's had a Vanos high pressure oil pump before. However, you can see slight markings where these bolts have been undone. So maybe it's just had the gear wheel. We're not quite sure, but we're still going to do the pipe uh, as the customer would like that done as a definite, whilst we've got good access to the bottom of the engine. So what this video is saying is that we're not going to be using the gear wheel like we thought we needed because it's already fitted correctly. So I'm now under the car and we're just getting ready to send the Vanos high pressure pipe 
through the engine block so it's just going to be coming down now and I'm going to try and guide that into position. We've already got the Vanos high pressure pump removed to give better access and whilst that's coming down we can just talk about this bolt on helical gear wheel which is the drive for the Vanos high pressure pump and that one I'm just trying to help ease the high pressure pipe coming down. There it goes. Needs a little bit of a twist. Just so it can come through. And here it is. Down into position. So now that's in, we can get that roughly located at the top where it comes out of the engine block to the distribution piece. And then we'll get the Vanos high pressure pump located. And then finally the sealant rings and the banjo bolt can go through and connect that new high pressure internal pipe up. The high pressure oil pipe's now in the correct position. We've got the Vanos pump refitted with the chain correct and the tensioner is in position. And now we've got the genuine BMW special tool set up. This is to check the backlash or actually set the backlash between the Vanos high pressure pump gear wheel and the its driven wheel which is on the end of the crankshaft. This is very important and it's got to be between 0 0.06 of a millimeter and 0 0.08 of a millimeter. So Luke's just going to move the um, or show us the depth that we've got set which is 0 0.07 of a millimeter which is absolutely perfect in the middle. Um, so we've set that now and now we can carry on with the rebuild. So this customer is also wanting the upgraded uh, piston oil squirters which sit up above the crankshaft on the underside of the engine block and squirt oil up onto the pistons of the opposing banks. So this one which is in central has just come out. I can now go over to the bench and see the old piston oil squirter versus the new one. So we'll put five of these new ones on with the new bolts as well. So just turning the engine over by hand, now we've added the new piston oil squirter and we've got one bolt in and we're turning over so we can access the other bolt hole. Just thought I'd show you what it looks like with the crankshaft rotating and position 9 and position 10 com rods and the pistons in the distance moving. And there we go, there's the new oil squirter in the distance and we've got the one bolt in and torqued up and now we've just got the access to put this other uh, bolt in on the final position. Here's the uh, the dual oil drain plug sump. So it's got the additional front drain which is fitted to later models. This is a 55 plate car and it hasn't got the front one, it's just got the main one at the rear. So the customers managed to find um, a double drain one and, uh, and that's going to be what we're putting onto the car with just some new oil pump um, o-rings and new drain plugs and the oil level. Oh. The entire job is complete, the engine is running, it's done one heat cycle already and we've let it cool down and we're now running the engine again with, uh, to basically get the correct level of oil in there and get a final oil read in. Um, everything is refitted underneath, torque checked correctly and paint marked. And there it is all back together, finished after the BE bearing, Comrod bearing and the BMW bolts with those um, high pressure pipe that you saw us fit in earlier in the video. So we've done some running and heat cycling, checked over everything, no leaks, we're quite happy. It's had new power steering fluid, um, car's all ready to go, been cleaned in the engine bay and that's a good success and our customer's going to go and take that and put some miles on it gently, little load for the first 500 miles and then um, that would count as a form of running in. And there's a successful E10 S85 Comrod bearing replacement at Reach Motorsport. And if you want to see more about this car in particular, or just read about E60 M5s, we created a, or helped create, a buyer's guide, E60 M5 buyer's guide for the BMW Car Magazine. So if you just go onto Google, it, uh, type in BMW Car Magazine June 2018. It was featured in June 2018 edition. You'll get through to um, Pocket Mags. You must go onto the Pocket Mags website. No other website. They're the only official ones that sell 
BMW car magazine and this is the issue you're after June 2018 which has clearly got the E60 M5 on the uh, front cover and also shows you it's a buyer's guide for the E60 M5. It's £4.99 in the UK to buy a digital version of that and uh, you can have a look inside the magazine quickly by using that small mirror uh, magnifying glass there you get eight picture shots of what the inside is and uh, one of the inside content shows not actually this car um, that's just a um, uh, library image but um, page 18 onwards is the buyer's guide for the e60 m5 which we created and includes this specific car this one you've just watched the video on showing the Comrade bearings this was featured in this magazine along with the owner's views and uh, and what he thinks of the car what he's done to it the maintenance going forward in his plans um, and just a nice little touch to the end this video on to show uh, it goes on to be slightly famous and had a, a small magazine feature